Hey folks, how's it going? Dustin Smith here with A2K, Allegiance to the King, and today we're going to be looking at what the early church preached as the saving gospel message, okay? There's a lot of confusion out there regarding what the saving gospel message is for Christians, but I'm going to show you today that both Jesus and the apostles within the book of Acts preached the gospel message about the kingdom of God, and of course the understanding with that included the important part of the death, resurrection, and exaltation of Jesus Christ, okay? Primarily, I'm noticing today that there are a lot of people out there claiming to be evangelists and claiming to preach the biblical gospel, but I don't hear anything about the kingdom of God. And yet, the gospel is defined as the gospel of the kingdom in the teachings of Jesus, okay? So let's begin with the teachings of Jesus to demonstrate what the biblical gospel actually is. We're going to look at a lot of passages from Scripture today just to make our point because the Bible is actually pretty clear on what the gospel message is. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23 says, Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. There you have it, folks. Jesus was teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, very clear there. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35 tells us much of the same. Matthew 9, 35. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of of the kingdom, okay? So we can see this is what Jesus was doing when he was going through all of the cities and all the villages teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We can see this also in Jesus' parables. In the parable of the sower, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19 has Jesus saying, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. So there, the spoken word, the spoken message is defined as the word or the message of the kingdom. Very clearly there. Let's look at Matthew 24 and verse 14, where Jesus is talking about how this same message is going to be evangelized throughout the entire world. Matthew 24, 14, Jesus says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the entire world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay? So we have Jesus preaching the gospel of the kingdom in his preaching, in the synagogues, in his teachings, in his parables, and he's saying that this message will be preached to the entire world. Okay? We know that at the end of each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Jesus dies, and he's raised from the dead. And we can see in many of these Gospels, Jesus appears to his disciples and commissions them as to what they are supposed to do. Since we're in Matthew, you might as well look at Matthew's commissioning, which is called the Great Commission. In Matthew 28 and verse 19, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Okay? There Jesus says that as they're going and they're making disciples, they're baptizing them, they're initiating them into the Christian faith, and they're teaching these disciples to observe and to obey all the things that Jesus commanded. Okay? So, Jesus commanded and taught and preached the gospel about the kingdom of God. Jesus says that he's going to ascend to heaven and that his disciples are to make other disciples and to get them to also teach the very same thing. So it makes sense that the disciples would be teaching others to be teaching the same message, the same gospel about the kingdom of God. Is this what they did? Well, we can see in the book of Acts that, yes, this is exactly what they did because we could see in the book of Acts clearly over and over that the apostles and the disciples continued to preach the message about the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Folks, this is really important. After Jesus ascended to heaven, the message of the kingdom of God continued to be the primary point of the saving gospel message. Of course, after Jesus was raised from the dead, the clear understanding of Jesus dying for the sins of the world and being raised from the dead was obviously added to it. Jesus had to die for people's sins in order that they can be redeemed and be a part of of God's kingdom. 
Let's look in the book of Acts very quickly to note all of the places to where the kingdom of God continues to be preached. Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, To these he, Jesus, also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking about the things concerning the kingdom of God. Okay, So 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus is still teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God. Okay. Next passage we're going to look at is Acts chapter 8 and verse 12, which says, When they believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, men and women alike. Okay, So we have Philip here preaching the message about the kingdom of God and about Jesus Christ, and these people were being baptized in water, men and women alike. Okay, We can see that the encouragement spoken by the Apostle Paul and his traveling companions was about the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 14 and verse 22 says that they were strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is something that they have not yet entered. They must enter the kingdom of God by continuing in their faith. Let's look at Acts chapter 19. In verse 8, we can see Paul continuing to preach the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 19, verse 8 says, And he, Paul, entered the synagogue and continued speaking out boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, as Paul leaves the church of Ephesus, this is what he tells the Ephesian elders. Acts chapter 20, verses 24 through 25. Paul says, But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course in the ministry which I received from the Lord to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that all of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will no longer see my face. <clears throat> so there we see Paul telling the Ephesian elders that he was commissioned to preach the gospel of God's grace. And this is defined in the very next sentence, in the very next breath, as preaching the kingdom. Preaching the kingdom. Very clear there, okay? Let's look in Acts chapter 28 and verse 23. This is when Paul is in Rome. Acts 28 and verse 23. It says, When they had set a day for Paul, they came to him at his lodging in large numbers, and he was explained to them by solemnly testifying about the kingdom of God and trying to persuade them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and from the prophets from morning until evening. All day long. Paul was trying to persuade them about the kingdom of God and the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then we have the last two verses of the book of Acts, capping off and ending on a strong note. Acts 28, verses 30 through 31. And he stayed two full years in his own rented quarters and was welcoming all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness unhindered. Okay? So for two full years, he's continuing to preach, again, the kingdom of God and the death and resurrection of Jesus. So folks, we've seen it right there. Jesus in his ministry preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into all the world and to preach the very same message to teach those disciples to observe all that Jesus had taught and commanded. And we can see in the book of Acts that they continue to preach, to herald, and to announce the gospel of the kingdom of God. Folks, I hope this has encouraged you today with your understanding of the saving gospel message. I encourage you to repent and to put your faith, trust, and your obedience in this kingdom of God, in Jesus as the king of the coming kingdom, the one who has died for your sins, has been raised from the dead, in triumph, has been exalted to heaven as the true Lord of the world, and to initiate yourself into the Christian faith by following and observing Jesus' commands and teachings, okay? I encourage you to like, fave, subscribe, and share this video for more updates from Allegiance to the King. I'm Dustin Smith with A2K. Until next time, take care.